Right, so we have a ton of new details regarding the iPhone 15 series, so of course let's delve into it. So beginning with Trendforce, they give us a ton of their expectations for the 15 series and the upgrades we could get. And Trendforce has been pretty reliable in the past, so yes, I do think this info's legit. So beginning with RAM, we should see 8 gigs of RAM with the iPhone 15 Pro series, and this makes sense because Apple generally does give us RAM upgrades every three to four years, and we've had three generations of iPhones now with six gigs of RAM as standards, and especially since the regular 14s also now have this, I'm sure they want to differentiate the lineup and give the Pro models more RAM. And actually, there were rumors that we could see 8K video with the 14 Pro, and so of course, to help process that, we would see eight gigs of RAM, but that was not the case. However, maybe with the Periscope Zoom upgrades, 8K video does happen with the 15 Pro series, and that's why we're getting 8 gigs of RAM. But even if that's not the case, RAM is a nice upgrade, and it should help apps stay in the background for longer with the 15 Pro series. Now moving on to what I think is a somewhat confirmed feature, and that is the Type-C port. So yeah, Trendforce, much like every other source, also tells us that we should see Type-C on the 15 series, and this makes sense because as a lot of you guys might know, the EU has now confirmed devices by the end of 2024 should all have the Type-C ports, and Greg Joswiak has said Apple's going to comply with this, and so yes, we're finally getting the USB-C ports with the 15 series. Which, by the way, is not great news for John Prosser because he tweeted this a few years ago. Anyways, I do want to mention there could be a massive asterisk to this, and there is a possibility Apple only gives EU devices the Type-C port. And why I do think this is possible is because Apple does now have many variants of the iPhones. For example, the US models don't have a SIM slot and also get millimeter wave, but of course, in China you get two physical SIM card slots. And so yeah, there are already a ton of region-specific models, and so I can see Apple adding to that and having EU models only come with the Type-C ports. However, as a rebuttal point to that, there are already a ton of countries joining in and also making Type-C compulsory on all devices. And so yes, I could see Apple just implementing this globally to of course avoid any other issues. And to be honest, we're gonna benefit from this change. We could see Thunderbolt on the iPhone for one, which of course is gonna massively benefit those who use ProRes, transferring footage with a Thunderbolt port is gonna be a lot better than the super slow lightning speeds, but also of course you can now use one port for all your devices. So yeah, personally I do see this being a global change for all devices. Now moving on to other details, Trendforce also says that much at like the 14 series, we should see the A16 on the regular 15 models, and only the 15 Pro series gets the upgrade to the A17 chip. And that does suck, to be honest, I wish the complete series was getting new chips, especially with the A17 being based on a 3 nanometer process, so the upgrade should be pretty big. But then again, you could argue the A16 is going to be more than fine for most consumers, so having that differentiation is fine. I do wonder about support though, because in previous years, the low-end and the high-end models have basically got the same support, but now with different chips, could the Pros get longer support? Well, I could actually see that being the case, especially if the 15 Pro does get more RAM, CS. So yes, for those who care about longer support, definitely do get the Pros. Now, Trendforce, much like other sources, does say the Pro Max or the Ultra, like some have suggested, could be the only model getting periscope upgrades, and we should see 10 times optical zoom on this. Now, this will be a big upgrade because right now with the 14 Pro series, it's capped at 3x, and so considering every Android flagship does have periscope zoom, it's nice, Apple's finally giving us this. And to be honest, as much as it does suck that the Pro's not getting this, it does also kind of make sense because taking a look at the Android market, all the larger phones have periscope lenses because it does take up a ton of space, and so the regular Pro might just be physically too small to fit a periscope lens. Plus, of course, Apple wants to upsell you to the Ultra CS, so yes, this move does ultimately make sense. So now you may be wondering what are the camera upgrades we could see with the regular 15 Pro. Well, that's going to be an 8-element lens for the main 48 megapixel sensor. So that could, of course, enhance the clarity of the shots, but it's going to be a pretty minor upgrade. However, it does seem the actual lenses 
could switch places on the back of the 15 Pro Series. Since the Ultrawide in the middle is going to move to the top, and I'm not sure what difference that makes, but that's what's being reported. Now finally, Trendforce does tell us we should see Qualcomm modems with the 15 series. Apple's still not happy with the in-house modems, and specifically the millimeter wave performance with these. And so yes, using the more reliable Qualcomm modems to of course they fix this does make sense. Since the modem is pretty important, and I remember how painful it was with the Intel modems we used to have, and so yeah, stick with these reliable Qualcomm modems till the in-house modems are perfect. However, I am excited about the potential of those because those being made by Apple could of course improve the efficiency of these modems and give us much better battery life on 5G. And yeah, that's about it for what Trendforce tells us. They do end the report by telling us we should see a September release and that's basically stating the obvious. So now let's move on to Ming Chi Kuo's new report. And first of all, they do tell us that yes, we should see type C on this. So again, that's more confirmation we're gonna get it. But more interestingly, we could see the pro models get solid state buttons. So I did talk about this in a previous video because there were some murmurs about this, but now Minchi Kuo himself does also tell us that yes, Apple might remove physical buttons with the 15 Pro series, and they might instead use solid state buttons, similar to the home button on the 7, where of course, the Taptic engine gives you haptic feedback that imitates a press when touching these buttons. Now I have seen some hate for this, but to be honest, I'm actually kind of fine with this, for one, this could be more reliable because there are less moving parts in the actual device. Also, because these are no longer actual buttons that need cutouts, Apple could improve the water resistance. Another advantage with these capacitive buttons is, of course, Apple does now save space inside the device for, of course, bigger cameras or bigger batteries. And also using the Taptic Engine, Apple could give us gestures on the sides of these devices. So similar to the stem on AirPods Pro 2, you could theoretically slide on the side of the iPhone to control the volume, which I think is pretty sick. Really, the only issue is of course, if iOS is buggy, there is a chance you actually can't physically reboot the device, but that hopefully can be ironed out, and ultimately I'm down for this. I mean, we've seen the magic Apple's done with the Taptic Engine in the past, and so yes, I'm pretty excited for this change. And by the way, because of this change, we should see two more Taptic Engines with the 15 Pro Series. I do wonder what's gonna happen to the mute switch though, because Quo says nothing about that, and it's an iconic part of the iPhone experience. And so is Apple gonna remove that? And maybe a longer press with a capacitive button can mute the device, and a shorter press can enable ringer mode. Anyways, that's about it guys, but tell me your thoughts regarding these reports in the comments. Anyways, thank you for watching guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for the latest Apple news and rumors. Check out the video in the code above on details regarding the iPad 10 and on that note, see ya peeps.